Alcohols can perform a type of reaction called dehydration. In this reaction, an alcohol reacts in the presence of H2SO4, which is a catalyst. So there isn't anything that we write in this reaction like plus some other substance, it's just the alcohol with the catalyst. Th this reaction focuses on the OH of the alcohol and also a hydrogen atom from an adjacent carbon. So we're looking at the OH from the alcohol, the carbon that it's attached to, an adjacent carbon, and a hydrogen that's attached to that adjacent carbon. These two right here. This reaction removes the highlighted hydrogen and OH group completely from the molecule, and it creates a carbon-carbon double bond. The hydrogen and the OH group that are removed come together to form a water molecule. Let me highlight those so that we keep it all kind of consistent. It's really the opposite of reaction of an alkene where we add a water molecule to the alkene to make an alcohol. Let me show you a couple of specific examples of this reaction. So here we have 2-pentanol and we're going to react it with the H2SO4 catalyst. And we want to try to predict the products of this reaction. So the first thing that you should do is just draw your carbon skeleton because you know you're not going to be changing the carbons in the molecule. You want to focus on removing the OH and also a hydrogen atom from an adjacent carbon. So the, the OH carbon is right here. That means the adjacent carbons are here and here. We're looking at the carbon atoms that are attached directly to the OH carbon. So we could remove a hydrogen atom from this position right here. If we chose to remove a hydrogen atom from this position, it would put our double bond in this location right there, right here. Let's draw that over here. Um, but we also have another option because there are two adjacent carbons. This is one of our adjacent carbons. This is the other adjacent carbon right there. So another option would be if we put the double bond in that position. Two different products that we could make for this reaction like that. Uh, both of these products are formed in this reaction, but the reaction does have a preference for one over the other. To help us predict the product that is preferred, we use something called sate seffs rule. Saitsev's rule says that the major product from this reaction is the product that has the most carbon-carbon bonds on the carbon-carbon double bond. That's kind of a lot to think about. The most carbon atoms that are attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. So if we focus on this carbon-carbon double bond right there, this guy has two carbon atoms attached. If we focus on this carbon atom right here, this guy only has one carbon attached to its carbon-carbon double bond. Because this one has more carbon atoms attached to the double bond, it is our major product. And the other product is referred to as a minor. This just simply means that we're going to make more of this molecule and less of this molecule. We don't know the exact distribution of them, we just know that there will be more of our major product. Let's look at one more example. Now, in this example, I'm going to um, I'm going to write our catalyst a little bit different, just like we've seen in other reactions that use H2SO4. Sometimes people just write H plus as an abbreviation, so I'm going to make a note of that up here. Could just say H plus, or sometimes people just write H3O plus. That works as well. So again, um, we could begin by drawing our carbon skeleton because we know that we're not going to be making any changes to that. Let's highlight our OH group because we know it's going to go away. And we've got all these different options of where our double bond could go. So our double bond could go between this carbon atom right here and any one of its adjacent carbons, any one of those guys right there. So let's start with this position right here. We're going to put the double bond in that spot. That's one option. But we've got another option as well. So let's consider, again, we've got three possible places where it could go. Let's consider this to be our next option right there, and we've got one more. Let's consider again, we've got one, two, three options. So here's our last choice, that position right there. There it is. Let's take a look at these three products that we made. When you're doing this dehydration reaction, sometimes you have to be a little bit careful to make sure that the products are actually all unique and that none of them are identical to each other. We can see that this one right here is clearly different. It has the double bond outside of the ring. 
But for this molecule and this molecule, they both have the double bond inside their ring, even though they kind of look like they're different because this one's going to the left and this one's going down, they may actually be the same molecule. One of the ways that we could tell if they're the same or if they're different is by numbering the carbon chain the way that we would number it if we were gonna give it a name. We could even go so far as giving it a name if we wanted to. The when, when I've numbered these carbons, we can see that for both of the molecules, there's a methyl on carbon number one, and there's a double bond in between carbons one and two. Because of that, these two molecules are actually identical to each other, and we don't need to draw both of them. It's not necessary. So I'm just going to erase this one out here. Between these two products, let's pick which one is our major and which one is our minor. Using Saitsev's rule, we want to find how many carbon atoms are attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. So let's highlight our carbon-carbon double bond, and then let's draw in all of the carbon atoms that are attached. This one has two carbon atoms attached to its double bond. Let's go to this one over here, highlight the carbon atoms of the double bond, and then write in all of the carbon atoms that are attached directly to that double bond. This one has one, two, three, three carbons attached. That means that this is our major product and this one is our minor product. And the last thing that I wanna add is that sometimes when you're drawing the products of these reactions, sometimes people also want you to include water as being one of the products of the reaction. Not always. You should check with your instructor on this or check with your homework assignment. If you use sapling homework assignment, sapling does always want you to write the water as one of the products of this reaction.